of the return air supply for this furnace. Uh, the return air comes in the bottom here where the blower cavity is and then it, it's a gas furnace so it heats it with the heat exchanger and then it goes up through the air conditioner coil and out through the supply duct. But in order to get the return air in and pull it from the parts of the house that we need it to, uh, we're going to have to duct that. It doesn't have to be as extensive as the supply duct work just because it's not hot air going through it. It's just, just a whip area to pull air from. Um, but if you pull it all right here by the furnace, first of all, it's gonna be really noisy. And second of all, the, the system's not gonna balance very well. It'll always be pulling more air supply to the room that it's in, rather than from all the ends of the house, bedrooms and, and everywhere. So what we're gonna do is come behind the furnace. There's a filter you can see there and it goes through into this utility room and we're gonna kind of duct the channel that the air can flow through in order to come straight in through that filter and into the bottom of the furnace. Okay. The channel that we're gonna to choose to take right here, we have it framed out just a little bit and we're gonna, we're gonna add some framing to it to get some support comes through right here. You can see there's some pipes in here, electrical. On a return, that's not a problem, but for supply, you can't have wires and pipes, everything going through the line. Uh, so here we have framed out through this bay right behind the furnace. It's gonna go up into the floor bays. And you see there's, there's TGIs running right here, uh, parallel. It comes out here, but we need it to go through about this one this bay over in the hallway upstairs. And to do that, we're going to use this material called thermal pan. Uh, thermal pan's great, uh, lightweight, basically cardboard with uh, metal sheeting, uh, metalized sheeting on the outside. It has an R value of R3. So it does give, does give you a little bit of insulation value. And we're basically just going to build the bay with thermal pan and you know some adhesives and some staples and stuff. Now I have a base piece to attach to. Uh, what I'm going to do is take these two by eights or two by tens, whatever they are, and I'm going to add them in here so that they're level. They come out the same distance as, as our framing because if I, if I span this 32 inch space with this thermal pan, this, the vacuum pressure is going to suck it in and it will close down the bay. So I need something to hold it out a little bit right here and all the way up through the wall. kind of a good makeshift bay, it lets the pipes go through just fine, lets the electrical go through, but it'll still support that thermal pan from pulling in. To do that, I'm going to use a uh, staple gun, just because uh, it's a little bit faster. You can also use panning nails, you know, something, big nail with a, or a small nail with a big head so that it holds the thermal pan on. And to do this, you kind of have to angle them a little bit because otherwise this staple got punch right through. bay right there. Okay, for this piece we're going to angle in and then go up into, into the base. But I have a little gap here that I want to fill. Um, 
as well as over here. I'm gonna pan off on the inside of it first, and then I'll do the cover for the outside. Um, also to do the cover, you kind of need something to attach to here and uh, again another support in the middle. So we're going to use some uh, two by fours. Uh, we got the thermal pen connectors and we're just going to slip this one. Give us a good seal without hooking it. Use the duct sealant. With this one we are going to have to do something like that with just to give it a better connection. Out of it. Right now I'm going to put a, uh, a little bit of hard cast 550 duct sealant uh, on the joints of some of this so that not only it seals it off a little bit better but it will also Right now our return air is sealed up basically to this point right here. Uh, I gotta block this off a little bit uh, on the inside so it doesn't escape. Uh, but it's all in this bay. This bay has been blocked here. So what we need to do now is block this one so that the air can travel through these holes into this bay. Then we're gonna travel down this bay into the hallway and hit one return air and then jump bays and hit the one upstairs. thermal pan because it's so thin and the uh, staples because they don't show up very much but you can just sheetrock right over this and it won't make any difference. We're going to drill through this TJI with this uh, four inch bit. We're just going to put uh, about three holes in it. Won't, won't screw up the structure at all but it'll allow the air to flow into this next bay or from the next bay. cut into the next bay and we've taken off the sheet of sheetrock so that we can access everything. But right now uh, we're going to go upstairs and chop a hole in the wall and see if we can get the baseboard return air down into this bay. Either this one or the next one. We can just drill some more holes over a couple of them. To uh, finish our return air, all we did was uh, string this up a little bit so that the thermal panel wouldn't go anywhere. We sheeted it with this thermal pad material, 36 by 32. Uh, boxed it out, closed all this off, sealed it up, and then brought it into the TJI bays. Then we've uh, blocked off the ends and ran down the bay uh, over the top of the supply trunk line and into this area here where we've drilled a few holes in between the bays and gone up into the top floor for a baseboard return air drill. Also right here, there will be a return air drill on the ceiling.